How to improve bad sound recordings. Hello, I'm Peter Baker, a professional voiceover artist with my own home studio. In this video, I'm going to share with you my two current favorite software programs for getting rid of background noise and also for reducing audio reverberation. Plus, how to install them. Now, you're saying if I'm a professional voiceover with my own booth, I even train people how to get the perfect quality professional sound with my courses on voiceovermasterclass.com. Why would I ever need these audio restoration software programs? Well, what I'm going to tell you is not to improve a poor voiceover recording location. It's always best to get the location and acoustics right without any post-production tampering. But the thing is, when you first get into voiceover, start earning money, you start recording simple scripts, but then you get into more complex production jobs where you may have to mix in recordings from other voice actors that are sent to you by the client. It might be dramas, all sorts of things like that. You may get a video interview or a documentary where you're asked to include your narration, mix the whole job at the end. And some of the video interviews may well have awful audio. What do you do? Or you're asked to improve, say, the sound quality of a podcast, which has been recorded with three or four microphones open at the same time in an echoey room. And your beautiful introduction in the booth then mixes into this echoey nonsense. Ah! So you end up getting audio production jobs as well as simple voiceover jobs. And that's absolutely fine because you'll get paid more, you'll know what to do because you work with the software all the time, and you get more variety in your working life. And just knowing that you can improve audio almost at the click of a button will give you enormous confidence in offering that, especially when you're sent video interviews done in the street or in a horribly echoey room, and you've got to add your voice over to this video and somehow make it look very professional. And if you can improve the sound of the video magically using one of the highly sophisticated software programs now available, there's more brownie points for you, a lot more work satisfaction, a lot more income. So first, what do we do with background noise? Well, Adobe Audition's got various ways of reducing background noise from the old sampling, the background noise, then using the process method. That adds a bit of echo. And there's even the fairly recent denoise feature, which is very good on Audition, but it tends to dull the overall sound. It also offers de-reverb, which, to be honest, isn't very good. But I can share with you two great inexpensive plugins that work astonishingly well. So this is my back garden. We're surrounded by all sorts of noises, and there's no way, surely, that any software program will cleverly make the sound that I'm recording here in my garden sound like I'm in a professional voice booth <laughs> indoors with all the acoustics and all that kind of stuff. But what modern software can now do using AI technology is to cleverly sample, hear the birds over there as well? But anyway, uh, cleverly sample it and then work out what is a human voice and what is not a human voice and what is not goes to zero and that gets rid of the background much more effectively than any of the old systems that where we used to sample and you got echo and you got all sorts of nasty artifacts. So I'll show you when we get back but I'm going to shut up now just listen to this noise. So if you thought the background noise in the garden was pretty poor what about here this is surely impossible for any software program to get rid of. I'm above a busy four-lane bypass, lots of traffic today. It's been raining, so you've got the tire noise increasing as well, as well as other traffic going past me here. Surely there's no way that a software program can work out what a human voice is, in other words, my voice, and the background noise? I'll just be quiet for a second. Okay, well, let's go back to the studio and check it out. But first of all, never mind getting rid of the background noise. What about reverberation? So we're now indoors, so we're kind of insulated from any noise from outdoors. But this is a bathroom where we're surrounded by all sorts of very uh, live surfaces, creating reverberation. Now, there's never been any good software program to get rid of reverberation successfully over the years, but maybe I can show you something that will impress you. So have a listen to this reverberation and I'll make it sound like I'm in a voice booth. So back here at base, I'll show you two great audio restoration programs 
that you can buy very inexpensively and using the VST system you can use within, for example, Adobe Audition, the audio editing program, and also Adobe Premiere Pro, the video editing program. So I'll show you these plugins in Premiere Pro. I could show you exactly the same ones in Audition. It doesn't really matter. Um, but look, this is a bit of me in the garden here. I don't know what speakers you're listening on now, so you probably can't hear too much of the birds in the background. Do cleverly sample here the birds over there as well? No, but you probably will listen to them here. Let's see down here. So let's get rid of that uh, noise and just see what happens when I just highlight that area here and then I bring in an effect. And I'm just going to type in waves. And this is my plugin, Clarity VX. And it's the mono version we want here. So I'm just going to bring it across, stick it on there. And then I will open up the waves here. Edit and open it up. It is. So it's on nothing at the moment. Now, what, listen what happens when I just turn this to the right. Echo, and you've got all sorts of nasty artifacts. So I'll show you when we get back, but I'm going to shut up now. Just listen to this noise. And suddenly, the noise goes. So if you thought the background noise and the... <laughs> right, so now I'm going to select this next bit. Uh, wait till you hear this, all right? So exactly the same thing. Clarity VX, the mono version of it, uh, gets dropped on that bit. And then we'll edit it here and uh, just listen to the sound in the background now. The garden was pretty poor. What about here? This is surely impossible for any software program to get rid of. I'm above a busy four-lane bypass. Look. And suddenly it's all gone. I'll just go to the traffic on its own. I'll just be quiet for a second. <laughs> OK, well, let's go back to the studio and check it. So there we are. I, I'm not fiddling this. It's absolutely incredible. There's hardly any artifacts at all. I can work out what a human voice is. In other words, my voice and the background noise. I'll just be quiet for a second. So what about the reverberation issue in the bathroom? Let me play a bit more of this. Insulated from any noise from outdoors. So hear that horrible reverb. It's uh, just not clean at all. So what do we do? Well, we go to software by Acon Digital, A-C-O-N. It's called Deverberate version 3. They really have tweaked it, and it is so good now. Um, so let's have a look at this. We go into Edit here, and you get this box. It looks very complicated, and you can learn a lot about this, but just the automatic setting is fine. Voice, remove reverb. Just click that. And now listen to it. Here we go. Surrounded by all sorts of very uh, live surfaces, creating reverberation. Now, it's gone. Reverberation has gone. It's absolutely amazing. I had a recording once in a, in a church. You know how reverby they are. And it sounded absolutely close mic Astonishing. So Acon Digital Deverberate 3. You can uh, do the sensitivity as well, muck about with the dry and reverb levels, but uh, honestly, just one click and you get an extraordinary change and it sounds as dead as this. There's never been any good software program to get... If I just get rid of it again... Rid of reverberation success. That's how it was. Don't you think that's amazing? I do. Now, once you buy and download these third-party plugins, how do you get them into Audition or Premiere Pro? Let me show you. In Premiere Pro, you go to Edit, and then Preferences, and then Audio. Edit, Preferences, Audio. And then when the box comes up here, you need to go to Audio Plugin Manager. Just click that. And I've got all this stuff here already, but when you do it for the first time, all this will be blank. Then you scan for plugins. You click that, and then hopefully all these will arrive. The thing is, when you buy a plugin and you install it, you've got to make a note of where it is installed, because it could be any of these locations. Usually it's C for Windows, Program Files, and then VST plugins, but it could be anywhere else. It could be in Program Files. You've got to like write it down on a piece of paper, remember paper? And, uh, and then you've got to add that there if it's not there. Scan for the plugins, and then it will be fine. It'll be in there. In fact, I don't even use those ones anymore. I've only used the ones I've ticked down here. So that's how you do it in Premiere Pro. In Adobe Audition, you go to Effects, then Audio Plugin Manager, usually at the bottom. And it's exactly the same. It's the same as we saw in Premiere. So again, these are the places it will scan. 
If the location is not there where you've installed it, you have to add it here and then click Scan for Plugins and either enable them or disable them or tick the ones you want, OK? And then click OK. And that's how to install them. So I hope you found all that interesting. If you'd like to learn more about Adobe Audition, audio editing, video editing, voice training, how to earn a great living as a voiceover and audio producer in the comfort of your own home, check out the many courses we have at voiceovermasterclass.com. Thanks very much for watching.